Hey guys, hope you're having a nice day. I had a lot of fun last night playing with some of my subscribers. Uh, we played some Halo 3 Big Team Battle, me and Vivian. It was a lot of fun. And the next time I do that, I will post it on my Instagram story so that you guys can catch it in time. But today we're just gonna go for a drive in the Type R. There's a lot of stuff I actually wanna talk about. But first, let's get that cold start, even though it's 100 degrees. Since a lot of people must, I don't know, skip ahead of my videos or I don't know what, but just to clear it up, I do have the MA Performance downpipe right here. Right there. And the reason I haven't put that on yet is because I'm waiting for the Cobra to get registered. But first I have to smog it, which I'm gonna try to do all that stuff tomorrow. Then I will be able to daily drive it legally. And then in case I break a downpipe bolt on the Type R, um, I won't be down to no cars. I'll be able to drive the Cobra to work and back. So I'm on my way to Target. I'm gonna buy some of the new Halo Infinite action figures. I also wanna talk about the Cobra in this video and also the 2022 Honda Civic Si. So about the Cobra. Thank you guys very much for enjoying last video. The last video was so much fun. I floored it like, I think four times. It feels pretty good, man. It feels really, really healthy, but you can definitely tell that it, it needs some bolt-ons. It needs some more airflow. I'm gonna have so much fun with that car and I hope you guys enjoy the content. And you know what I just thought of? I haven't had anybody recently ask me to race my Type R, like nobody. It's weird because when I had my SI, everybody wanted to race. I mean, I was getting picked on by a lot of people with cars that had, I don't know, 100, 150 more horsepower than mine. Like, hey, uh, I got this car, a couple things done to it, do you want to race? And I'd be like, okay, well, what exactly is done to it? What are the power numbers? Because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go waste gas on a blowout. And they'd be like, oh, it's a supercharged 8th gen. And I'm like, are you trying to be funny? Or like, what 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 are you trying to do? What, what is this? What, what's happening here? Very strange behavior. But anyway, that's in the past. I haven't had anybody inquire about going up against the Type R lately. You know what I really want to do, guys? I really want to do a half mile drag race. Uh, I wish there was a place close by here in Northern California. I don't even know if there is a place in California that does half mile drags. But I would love to do it. Oh my God. I keep thinking about the 2022 Toyota GR86 and I just get so, so excited. 228 horsepower, 7,500 RPM redline. I mean, it's not going to be super fast, but it only, it's only gonna weigh 2,800 pounds again. I don't know, I think that would be a really, really good race versus a stock S2000 once I do get that car. Once, sorry, once Vivian and I get that car. A lot of people have been DMing me on Instagram and asking me what I think about the Fearable tune. And I don't know if they either miss my videos where I talk about it or they just maybe they think that I'm holding back but I tell them exactly what I've said in my videos I mean that there is nothing wrong with that tune it is phenomenal you guys should definitely buy it the cool thing about getting the fearable off the shelf tune for this is that I mean let's say you're doing an e-tune or dyno tune however many revisions or however many dyno pulls that takes each time you floor this car you're putting wear and tear and I know I sound like a little bitch but it's true, you're putting wear and tear on your car to do like an e-tuning series. I don't know how long that takes, maybe 10, 12 revisions. Whereas buying the tune, you can just go online and buy it. You don't have to beat on your car, you just upload it and then you can beat on your car. 
just like this. Oh crap, dude. I had my freaking AC on. I heard the whistle a little bit. So after we get out of Target, I'm gonna turn the AC off and try it again. Hopefully the whistle's not back. Oh crap, I don't know how to drive. What's up, bud? Okay, she did not want to look at me, that's okay. Okay, to all my Type R owners out there, I need your help. I need your recommendations. I don't know if I want to get the PRL Turbo Inlet Pipe or the Rampage. I've shown you guys a picture of the Rampage one before. It's it's super expensive. I think it's like a thousand bucks or maybe a little less than a thousand dollars. But uh, it would look so good. Here's another picture of it on the screen. Uh, I don't know, should I have the full PRL setup or should I switch it up? I just don't know. God damn, it's hot under here. Dude, that was so cool. I was just walking out of Target with my action figures and there was this really nice red C5 Z06 right there and this guy was getting into it. I was like, hey man, nice car. And uh, it was this guy named Robbie and we ended up talking. Turns out he has seen some of my videos before. He said he saw the video of me racing that C5 Corvette like a month ago. So we ended up talking for a bit, really cool guy. I wanna show you guys here, I haven't washed this car yet since ceramic coating it. And we got some, oh my God, that's a huge bug. Holy crap. I don't know when you guys are gonna see this video, but as of recording it right now, the ceramic coating is still not fully cured. I think it needs 14 days. And those 14 days are not up yet. But it looks so, so, so good. I can't believe it's stayed this clean. It's like the dust is skipping right over it. It's very strange. And it feels silky smooth. I would say about 95% of the swirls are all gone. I'm having a hard time even getting them on video. But look at that. Black cars are like a mirror, man. That's so cool. I absolutely love it. Let me show you what I got here and then we'll talk about the 2022 SI. So I got this guy here, Spartan Gunnier, or however you say that, but he's got a rocket launcher, so I got him. I think this will end up being a really rare and sought out figure years and years in the future. I also got this multi-pack, and also, I got this guy. Another freaking chief, dude, I have enough of them. But this is the only way I could get that brute chieftain, which I'm psyched. These are the four and a half or five inch figures. Um, whereas these ones right here, these are much better quality. They're like six and a half inch scale, but they stand at seven inches tall. The 2022 Civic Si. A lot of people for some odd reason think that Honda is never going to make the SI again. That is absolutely not true. They are making it again. Honda has done this before several times where they've skipped a year with no SI. So for example, 2016 when the 10th gens first came out, um, the SI and the Type R were not released until I think late spring 2017. So that's basically what Honda is doing again. Why they're doing a staggered release, I'm not entirely sure. But I have an article here which I have linked down in the description. It's from thedrive.com. This says the 2022 Civic Si might only live on as a sedan, which kind of sucks. I watched the hatchback reveal this past Wednesday night and dude, the hatchback 11th gen looks really good. I really, really like it. It says here, Honda Canada has just confirmed on Twitter that America's northern neighbor will only see the car in sedan form sparking questions around what this means for the US market. Well, we usually have the same exact thing as the Canadian market. So chances are Honda is still going to deny us a Civic Si hatchback this time around again, which, which really sucks. See, here's the tweet. Uh, this random person said, looks great and please give us the new Si in hatch form again. Honda Canada responded with, hello Malaweg, there will only be a sedan version of the Si. What? Why are they doing this, man? Why can't Honda just give the people what they want? Why? And then another tweet right here says, since the cat is out of the bag for Canada, can we get confirmation from Honda USA on whether the Civic Si will be hatchback or sedan? Honda Canada again responded with, thanks for reaching out. We cannot comment on the US division's plans for future product releases. 
I don't know, man. I, it sounds like they're they're making it seem like they don't want to speak for the U.S. But when in the past have we gotten something different than the Canadian market? We usually get the same exact thing. And what would be the reasoning for us getting a hatch but Canada not getting a hatch? Maybe the temp gen hatchback sales were not that great in Canada. So Hana just assumes that they wouldn't want to buy an SI hatch. Whereas the hatchback sales here in the U.S. were really good. So they're considering giving us one. I don't freaking know guys. I don't know. I just would really like to see a hatchback SI. See, now that I just talked to Robbie, I really wish I had a C5 because at night when I would turn on my C5 and the pop-up headlights would automatically flip up. Oh dude, it looked and felt so cool. It felt like I was traveling back in time to where I belong. I really feel like I was born in the wrong time, guys. But yeah, I really, I seriously want your guys' opinions on which turbo inlet pipe to get. I know PRL is, I mean, they make phenomenal products for the 10th gens and, you know, other generations, they make good turbo kits, but a lot of people like to stick to, just like stick to PRL, um, which is great. But I love the looks of that Rampage turbo inlet pipe. Okay, let's turn AC off. Let's get this done. Oh shit. I'm gonna put her in R mode. Oh my God, the pedal, the pedal is so touchy. Should I do a fourth gear pull? No, let's do a, let's do a third. AC whistle. We are good to go. I love switching lanes on the highway when you're in sport or R mode. It's so freaking satisfying. I'll do it again right here. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, I gotta do it again. My goodness. But yeah, so Robbie with the C5 Z06, I don't know if you would like to see how your car compares to this one now. I'm not saying I would be driving. I mean, I'm obviously never driving in my racing videos, my quote unquote racing videos. Also, someone just texted me on Instagram and they said, hey, are you ever going to get a big turbo on the Type R? Please say yes. I actually said yes, uh, but I wanna wait until after we get the GR86 and we have a third car in case something goes terribly wrong. With a stage one tune, I would like to know the reliability statistics with this car. I know for the SIs on a stage one tune, they have a phenomenal track record with their reliability. I assume the Type R's would be just as reliable on a stage one tune. This auto rev matching is amazing too. Now that I've driven this car 7,600 miles, I notice a little more about it, you know, every day. The comfort mode, sport, and R, I can definitely tell the difference with the torque output, or the torque targets, I should say. In sport and R mode, definitely a huge difference with the, like, the low end torque. Oh, and I do have a matchup for the Cobra. Uh, I'm not gonna say exactly what it is. It is something that you've seen on the channel before and I believe it's going to be an absolutely phenomenal comparison. The Cobra needs to see some action, guys, 100%. Oh my God, I love this shifter. <laughs> that's, that's another thing the Cobra needs is probably an MGW shifter. Are you playing Call of Duty again? Charlie, it's clearly me. What the hell's your problem? Wanna see my action figures? Yeah. Are you super excited that we have more action guys in the house? No. There's a nice orange one with a rocket launcher. Yeah. Got I got this one. See, what I really want is more of the alien guys. The Covenant. Actually in Halo Reach, or Infinite, they're called the Banished. And I got another. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. It's got a little gravity hammer. 
So in this video, I'm actually gonna go to Target and get some Halo action figures. I'm gonna talk about the Cobra, and also I want to... Today I wanna to talk about the Cobra. Fuck. 